All right, if you're looking for hockey talk, odyssey.com rewind. We gave you the first hour and a half of the show pretty much on it. Uh, you can go get that right now. Also, programming note, tomorrow, 2 to 6, it'll be Stoney and Wojo joining us, their annual drop tournament. Um, Rico, very colorful with Roberto during the break regarding the naming selections. We'll move on from that. The point is, uh, that'll be tomorrow, which is, well, it's a perfect day for it because no one cares about the All-Star game. All right, so the Tigers draft. Let's get to this. Now, initially... The thought process was they can't really screw this up. That it's going to be, there's three elite college players with Skeens, Cruz, and Langford. They're just going to take whoever fell to them. Easy enough. Beep, bop, boop, bop, beep. There was even a conversation about the Pirates doing what they normally do and underslotting a player, meaning they would take someone who was really four or five or six saving money, and maybe Cruz or Skeens falls to you. Well, that didn't happen because the Pirates actually, like, nutted up and Took just the guy. drafted the appropriate guy. So at three, I thought the prevailing thought is, okay, well, the Tigers will take Wyatt Langford, the outfielder from Florida, slugger, college bat, and you know what? If things break right, second half of next year, he could be here. They didn't. And they took Max Clark, a high schooler. Now, this is not a Max Clark thing. I don't know Max Clark from a hole in the wall. This is a thing that I don't like drafting. For, for, first of all, drafting a high school arm in the top 10 is ridiculous. That's why I hated the Job pick versus Marcelo Meyer. Meyer's now one of the five best prospects in baseball, and Job is, you know, throwing low A ball. <laughs> and, and again, looks good doing it, but right. I mean, High school arms get hurt, full stop. Well, now you got a high school bat. So I thought of you because I, I really tried to go, okay, what am I presenting to the listeners? I can't blowtorch the pick, but I was frustrated because I look at Torkelson and Green and Colton Keith and Justin Henry Malloy as kind of this core four, and they need help now, not three years from now, or four years from now. They need help now while you have them under contract, team control, runway. Right. And I think what Scott Harris is telling you is this. They believe the upside on Max Clark is so much higher than Wyatt Langford that they took him. And Scott Harris's comments are, look, I know five-tool player gets thrown around a lot, but th I really mean it. This guy has it all. The problem, the high school. Mm -hmm. And the level of competition. It's just, it's, and again, he played in the under 18, but he's yes. a Midwestern kid. He's not from Texas, not from California, Indiana. not from Florida. You know, what you did in Indiana against high schoolers doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, but he had a 700, you know, on base percentage. No, no, no okay. but see, there, there, hold on, let, uh, not to interrupt you, but there's something to what you're saying because you see the same in football. Correct. Because I've often said a kid from Texas, California, Florida, they're more advanced when they get to college because you can play year-round. Right. There's a thing called snow. You got to <laughs> go inside. You can't do everything that you want to do. When you're in Cali, yeah. when you're in Texas, when you're in Arizona, now, when, when you're in Now, when he played at the showcase tournaments, allegedly played well. Right. So here's my point. I thought of you and your guy, Dr. Strange. <laughs> okay. What are our odds of making it out of this? And there's one scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing over there. <laughs> there's one. If, if In order for this Max Clark pick to work out, he must be a superstar because they risked it for the biscuit. Now, I like when GMs do this. Mm -hmm. I'm not being a hypocrite saying I would have preferred the college bat, but I like the fact that Scott Harris is taking his professional life into his own hands. Max Clark, you are drafting on the idea of a ball player, not the actual player that – when you read analysts and they say, well, he's the toolsiest player. Mm -hmm. He has the most raw ability. Okay, that's great. I've also read, heard, listened to 
Well, in other years, he would be taken number one overall. This is all well and good. Right, but that's this year. What I'm saying is my misgiving has nothing to do with the player. I don't know Max Clark. And maybe three years from now, we're looking at our version of Corbin Carroll or Ellie Dela Cruz or J-Rod or Bo Bichette, whomever. But that th- those three years it will take, minimum. I mean, Riley Green was advanced. It took Riley three years. So the point I'm making is the misgiving is with the timeline. But I actually am willing to go with this because I like when general managers put their own life in their hands. If yeah. this kid is not a star and Wyatt Langford shows up in the league next year and is a good player, that's a bit of a boondoggle. Mm-hmm. Now, the, you're right. Things get uncomfortable for Scott Harris. That pick told me one thing. Well, a couple things, but the well, main that thing. That you hired people from Tampa Bay, which he did. Yeah. <laughs> because they and almost Tampa, exclusively draft high schoolers in the first I think round. like seven out of the last nine or ten drafts, they draft Sounds right. high schoolers. It tells me that this man is comfortable in his own skin, that he knows there's no pressure on me. I can go the long game. I don't have to sit here and try to win right away. See, there's my problem. I can take my time and build something. And, yes, it kind of goes back to what I said. That seven-year rebuild, throw it out the window. You're starting a brand-new rebuild. Okay, but and you're not wrong. But here's my problem. And I'll say it with a straight face, and I know you'll laugh at me. Rico, they could win the division next year. See, this is you know I'm not I'm I'm not laughing. But they they could. There's a difference between winning this piece of crap division Mm -hmm. and winning a World Series. Yes. He has the mindset like you like and appreciate. I don't really care about this. I want to win a World Series. I want to put a team that if I go out against the Dodgers or the Braves, they can beat them. Mm -hmm. This team. Not so much. It's just hard to separate the seven years we've been through and then know that this prized pick we had. And again, uh, th- this young man is now your number two prospect in your system. If, if you want any, Colton Keith is number one. This is number two. He hasn't taken a single at bat in the janitor league or the complex league or whatever it is. He's number two. It's really hard to know that unless. He is just a unicorn. It's going to be three years. Huh? That's really hard. That's hard for me to sell my listeners. That's hard for me to sell myself on it because I view it. Look, man, they've got a ton of payroll coming off the books, about 50 million coming off the books. A couple nice bats in free agency. We bring up Justin Henry Beloy. You bring up Colton Keith. Hopefully, Torque develops in the second half. Riley Green looks to have arrived. Rico, I can make a case to win this thing next year. And instead of being able to call on a college kid to come up here, might be able to help you. But this tells me I'm going long-term. I'm going to do this the right way, not the fast way, not the quick way. We're not going to skip steps. I see this kid, and down the line, he's going to help this team out. I think that's why you're not seeing the, you know, like, we need to go and get this bat. I don't think he's going to be that active at the trade deadline. I think he's truly... Well, Long time. I, well, I'd like to see him sell. You can probably see. I mean, yes, selling, yes. Yeah, no, no. But that, buying, I don't no. think he's going to get that bat that you want. And no, look, Max Clark, by all accounts, incredibly gifted. Everything from defense to speed. The idea would be Max Clark would play center and Riley Green would slide over to left field, right? If this kid is who he thinks he is, you're going to have a star in your hand. But man alive, baseball already, I would have to do the studying on hockey. But from an NFL, MLB, NBA standpoint, I feel like baseball is the most volatile. I mean, it is so hard to predict. And when you draft a high schooler, it becomes even harder. Then I factor in, and this is bias, I'm admitting it, the Tigers and their atrocious 
player development over the last 25 Once again. years. That's bias. It is. But it's hard no, no, for me. But you and the rest of the city are allowed to be biased because this is what you saw, but you got to forget about that. You're right. Football, I think, has the best hit rate because they actually have to be three years out is. of high school. There it is. So you know. It's the closest to 50% you can get. Imagine if the NFL draft and they were drafting high school seniors. I think you'd end up like baseball where it's about a 20% success rate right. in the first round. So, so again, I'm rooting like hell. I hope this kid turns into our version of pick young, mercurial, superstar from the clouds. The only thing that bummed me out was timeline, but I like it because Scott Harris did what I asked. He drafted bat upon bat upon bat upon bat. No arms. Now, if skeins fell to them, you're taking it. Right. Period. But, yeah, I mean, the fact that... But he didn't. No, but you're taking a high school player. You're probably not going to see him for three years. And that's if he's good. Opening day, 2026, at best.